the entries, a lot of entries uh, have like the damage on the on the model kit. Uh, how Hobbycare runs workshops and how we run workshops, uh, we have two different styles. Uh, this one is more of a simple workshop because we've got our picture here. So a, a lot of the entries use uh, fire uh, to uh, simulate the damage. So using uh, fire it can create a, a realistic type damage, uh, but uh, Mr. Kogrich himself uh, doesn't like to use uh, like the heat uh, damaging technique. So the, the reason that uh, Mr. Kogushi doesn't like to use uh, fire and heat to, to simulate the damage is that uh, it just, it, it, it looks like damaged plastic uh, versus uh, like the kind of example are made of metal sort of thing. Uh, and it's also good to remember that in, in the mobile suit kind of world, uh, they're generally around 18 meters or so. Uh, so, you know, the gun, Gunpla is uh, like a scale model of a roughly 18 meter tall robot. So when you use like uh, fire or heat to to do the damage on on a small scale model, uh, when you scale that up to full size, uh, then that would look uh, like a very very large fire. Uh, and so, how would you make uh, damage uh, on, on your model kit uh, well then taking into account uh, scale? So of course, you know, when, when the robot is like 18 meters tall, uh, it, it will develop uh, scratches and things uh, as it is in operation. So uh, when when they're fighting like on Earth, uh, it's one thing to take into account is that the building height will be around shoulder height. And so people will be around the height of the feet. Yeah. So it's important to consider the size and just how large you know, a Gundam would be. So if you did have a, a Gundam walking in the real world, uh, most of the scratches will be gathered around the feet and ankles. Uh, however, also considering uh, if the battles were occurring in space, uh, then the damage is going to be completely different. So in, in the kind of animation as well, the, the mobile suits are seen like flying through the air. Um, 
So when they're flying through space, you also have to remember that there is bits of uh, junk and debris uh, floating around in space as well. Uh, so, uh, like broken mobile suits or colonies that were blown up would you know, result in a lot of debris uh, floating around in space. So we think of space as quite empty, uh, but there would be things floating around. Uh, so if you're flying through that at, at great speed, So when you'd be flying around through these debris fields at high speeds, the scratches and damage won't occur at the feet, as they would on Earth, but they would instead occur like on the shoulders and on the head, sort of thing, uh, where they'd be sort of heading straight into the debris field first. Um, so have, have people here seen the, the very first Mobile Suit Gundam animation? Okay, I, people have seen it, put their hands up. Uh, so this particular model uh, in, in the animation was first seen uh, moving uh, as activated in the colony side 7. So this, the, this one is from like the initial activation, so as a result it's all done clean and white and it was covered in a gloss finish. And so, also all around it are the like the warning signs on it. Um, so this one was still just in the test phases for the Earth Federation forces, so it's still clean. Uh, however, on the chest, like the, some bullets have uh, uh, hit the chest plate. <laughs> and the, these are the the bullets from the the very initial scene where the Gundam uh, sits up in the loading pay and the Zaku uh, shoots at the chest of his uh, standing. <laughs> so, so this particular model uh, was done for uh, that particular scene in the tele television animation, uh, which as a result is why the rest of it is still clean, uh, but just those three bullet holes uh, to capture the feel of, of that scene. <laughs> so, but after that, uh, the Gundam then went into space and began uh, operations. So after that, the, the Gundam had battle with uh, Rambo Rao. Yeah, and so this particular uh, model is made in for around the time when those battles were taking place. When the battle in the desert uh, was taking place. So during that scene, uh, 
I would already uh, ran away from the white base uh, with this gun, well, with the gun. So just on his own, uh, like without the support of the white base, he was uh, wandering around the desert uh, with the gun. Yeah, and, and during that time, he was still fighting Simon. And so during this time, because he was on his own, uh, any repairs, like he wasn't able to do repairs to the Gundam on his own. Okay, and so in this particular case, unlike the previous one, which was done in a nice gloss top coat, uh, so I use this one to simulate the effects of say getting caught in uh, desert sandstorms uh, has the the rough, the flat coating uh, and the well, the coloration uh, to um, all the sort of representing the effect of its environment. So despite this being the same Gundam, uh, because the, the, they're from different scenes, uh, the, you know, the feel of the, the Gundam is different. So when when making uh, your model for for the Model Kit World Cup, uh, it's good to have in your in your own mind like that scene uh, of of where where this particular uh, mobile suit was fighting. And so, having that image of the scene in your mind is very important uh, when designing and thinking about making damage uh, on your model kit. So for, uh, a way to think about it is like the shield obviously is going to be one of the easiest places for damage to happen on the Gundam because it is it's the shield. So we're going to make some uh, some scratches uh, on the shield of the, this particular model kit shield. And so the easiest place for scratches to occur would be like on on the front face of it, but there will also be lots of little scratches that will gather sort of on on the edges. So to, to simulate the sort of tipping that would happen, uh, just using the, the cutter, uh, sort of slowly, uh, uh, little bit by little bit, uh, make make the little uh, cuts on the edge. So to, to make it easier to see it, we just add a little bit of colour uh, to, to the notches. On the white parts, uh, after you've uh, done your damaging, it can be quite hard to see uh, the, the damage, so it's, it's good to use uh, the dark colours to help show up uh, the damage.
Uh, so we've just got to wait for this this paint to dry at the moment. So while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to demonstrate some other damage techniques. So we're going to demonstrate uh, when bullets hit the shield uh, at both when a bullet would hit the shield head on and when it gets a glancing blow. Uh, so, like last time, uh, we used uh, the uh, sandpaper to roughen the, the surface uh, just using a fine sandpaper. Uh, so the, the sanding is done so that it's easier for you to see, uh, easier to draw the part, like the, the lines on uh, for your design. So we're draw just drawing on uh, the sort of image that you'd get after the shell hits head on and then explodes. Uh, so the, the sort of uh, almost crater-like effect sort of, of of the image of the bullet hitting and then exploding. So to start with, we're just going to uh, make the hole that the bullet made first. So to start with, just go lightly. Uh, and this is with a, a pin box. So just to make the hole at the center of, of the damage. Uh, and now around it, we're just using uh, the point, the needle point of a compass uh, to uh, add the, the detail on, around the edge of the hole. So uh, we're just doing the line sort of radiating, radiating out uh, from the inner inside of the hole to simulate the explosion. So after having done that sort of scribing, because it was a, a very weak, a light uh, drill in the first place, uh, it's an idea to drill in a little bit deeper again because you may have lost uh, where the center of the hole is. Uh, but again, uh, still drill uh, lightly.
after the scratching, the, the finishing damage uh, will be completed with paint. So after the bullet first hits, uh, the metal underneath uh, will become visible. Uh, in this case, to sh uh, Mr. Kawaguchi himself likes to use uh, four colours, these four colours, uh, to show uh, the layers through the damage to get to the bare metal. <laughs> so the first colour is uh, metallic grey. Um, as well as uh, some black. as well as chrome silver. <laughs> and finally, uh, titanium gold. <laughs> For now, just using this lid as a palette, uh, but normally you'd use a, a proper paint tray. So just put a, putting a little bit of each colour uh, onto the palette. So to start with, uh, filling in the, the, where the bullet actually first hits uh, with metallic grey. Uh, as well as then the, the scratches and uh, around, around the hole. So after that, we'll mix the, the all of the colors uh, through. Okay. Uh, so don't mix the colors on the palette, actually mix the colors uh, on the model. So by mixing, the colours actually on the model itself, uh, you actually get a, a gradient blend sort of thing versus if you mix them separately then they'll sort of be clearly a different colour uh, when you place it down. So because of the great heat uh, associated with a bullet exploding, uh, that's why the colour is changing. And that's also why, so different areas will have uh, different colours. Also, I mean, there will be some of the smaller scratches on the shield that are just going to be from uh, smaller particles exploding out from the bullet, and they will be represented with uh, just paint. So now this is a sort of, uh, that sort of feeling with the small, small scratches.
So it's simply using different colors. The colors uh, are drying uh, as the different layers of paint. Go on. So by using the different colors, uh, you can then simulate the different layers of the armor. So you might use uh, a different, the chrome uh, for a thicker layer of the armor and the metallic gray for another layer. So, but also, like while, while we're talking, the paint on the is, is uh, drying. Uh, so the people who saw the previous uh, presentation uh, will be familiar with this. Uh, we're just using uh, sandpaper and a mechanical pencil uh, to make some lead powder. And then using, and then using a cotton bud uh, so that you can do the shading uh, around the whole. Again, from, from the explosion of, of the bullets, uh, the color of the paint as well would have been changing. Okay, uh, so after, uh, after, after the explosion, the, the, the area will be, uh, become a little bit black. Sort of thing. So instead of doing it uh, the all around uh, the whole the whole area of the bullet hole, because that would just make uh, the whole area look the same colour. So now that that paint has dried, we're moving to a, a different color uh, to uh, show that the, another layer of the armor. So, so for after this stage, like all the other damage will be re represented uh, with just colors, not actually doing other modifications. So considering that this model is 1 to 144 scale, uh, the damage uh, should also be considered in 1 to 144 scale. Uh, so until now we've just done a what happens when a bullet hits the shield uh, directly on, uh, but so now we're going to actually look at uh, if a bullet were to strike uh, on an angle. Uh, so this time you still start with uh, drilling a, a center hole uh, with, with a pin vise, uh, but compared to last time, the hole uh, should be less deep. Uh, 
So in this case, we're going to show the when there's a bullet hit there at the hole and then sort of glanced off to the side uh, as shown. So to, to open the, the hole that the bullet would have made in the shield were using a knife. So previously, uh, so previously we had the explosion damage coming out in all directions, uh, but this time as a glancing, uh, glancing shot, uh, we're concentrating on the, the damage going in, the explosion going out in one direction. And then after that, uh, in the same way as before, uh, using paint to add the detail uh, to, the, to the explosion. So you can try to imagine uh, trying to draw, draw the damage uh, onto the model. So again, still considering that this is 1 to 144 scale uh, when you're drawing the damage onto the parts. And so, uh, also drawing, uh, drawing on these sort of uh, scratches, the fine scratches you get uh, from smaller particles uh, during battle as opposed to uh, bullets. So for the small scratches, uh, because because they're shallow and it's 1 to 144 scale, you don't actually need to use a cutter or, or the compass needle uh, to add the scratches. You can actually do them on with just paint.